from CNN's Christy Lou Stout. So, uh, Christy, what's happening there in Hong Kong? What are the kids doing? Well, it's happening not just in Hong Kong, but across the region. And today is a special day. It is the fifth anniversary of my Freedom Day. It is the 10th anniversary of the CNN Freedom Project. And we hosted a special webinar with students across the region, along with two modern day abolitionists. Look, modern day slavery is real and it's immense. According to the Global Slavery Index, some 40 million people are enslaved in the world today. Here in the Asia Pacific region, 25 million children, women and men are enslaved, 25 million. That's roughly the population of the entire continent and country of Australia. Now with students, again, from across the region and with two activists, we discuss the issue of modern day slavery and crucially, how to end it. Say hello to Asia's next generation of freedom fighters. We are excited to have with us scores of students joining us by video chat from schools across Asia. We got Hong Kong, Tokyo, Seoul, Bangkok and Noida in India. Joining us, we have two modern day abolitionists who are based here in Asia. We as human beings buy things and a certain percentage of what we buy is tainted by modern slavery. We don't know which items are tainted, but the relevance of this is that kind of like global warming, it's kind of like the carbon footprint. It demonstrates that we are part of the issue. And as a result of that, we also have to be part of the solution. What's even more surprising is that businesses and brands themselves also have a hard time knowing this information. We need to learn more about the journey and uh, stories of migrant workers themselves and hear about their experiences because that's also what's going to change uh, people's minds and hearts and attention to this issue. Let's open it up to Q&A. To all of you out there, this is your chance. Your chance to raise a question. Do victims of human trafficking self-identify as a victim of a crime? Or many people that I've met who are victims of human trafficking don't even realize that they are victims of anything. They just realize that they are in this bad circumstance, they're being threatened, they made choices, the choices resulted in them being there, and they're often surprised if you go and say you want to help them. What role does education play in alleviating this issue? When people are aware what it, ta it takes to get the products we have, um, we're going to want our brands to hold themselves accountable to better standards. What are the some ways that we as students can um, highlight the issues that are pertaining to human trafficking so that the government is compelled to take action and not ignore them? And there's a point at which we as human beings just have to say enough is enough. We have to step up, we have to take a stand, and it's often students that lead this. This is what is gonna bring the change about. And that's why this day is so important. What are some ways we can make people and motivate them to be more conscious about their spending habits? You choose something because of the stories behind um, that product. Um, and if you think about the fish you ate uh, was caught by someone on a slave boat, um, I think it would become much less appetizing. Um, if you could buy something that was ethically made, wouldn't you love that more? Victoria, thank you. Okay, everyone, now is the time to decide on a solution. What is the best way to convince the largest number of people to commit to stopping forced labor? There's no right or wrong answer here. The poll result is in, become more aware of how goods are made and take into consideration a company's business practices before making a purchase. That's going to be part of the action plan from Asia. It's going to contribute to the 2021 Freedom Pledge that's going to be available online for students and educators around the world to sign. So let's continue to work together to deliver the freedom for people across the world and across here in the Asia Pacific region. And you can find that pledge at cnn.com slash myfreedom. Such thoughtful questions from the students and strong insight from those two modern day abolitionists there, including Matt Friedman of the Mekong Club. And tied to this day, the fifth anniversary of My Freedom Day and the 10th anniversary of the Freedom Project, the Mekong Club has launched a moon goal to end slavery. According to its moon goal, the objective is as follows. It wants the private sector to eliminate forced labor and human trafficking from its supply chain by the year 2030 without any 
negative impact on productivity. If you want to find details, you can find it online, Twitter, at the Mekong Club. I'll also put it on my timeline as well. Again, it's a special day, 10 years of the Freedom Project. For 10 years, CNN has been shining a light on the issue of human trafficking. NGOs tell us that our reporting and documentaries have led to changes in corporate policies and changes in laws in various countries around the world. But the biggest impact is yet to come. It's coming from those students. The students you saw speaking out there who are so engaged, so passionate about ending this horrific practice, they're the ones who are raising awareness and raising the bar to finally end modern day slavery. John. Christy, thank you. Christy, at least out there for us in Hong Kong. Appreciate it.